Hello everyone, my name is Prabhjot Sendhu. I'm a PhD student at McGill University. Today I'm going to present our paper titled A Structure Driven Performance Analysis of Sparse Matrix Vector Multiplication. This work was done under the supervision of Professor Clark Warbrug and Professor Laurie Hendren at Sable Lab, McGill University. Today we'll first look at an introduction and experimental design and then going through our research questions and finally summarizing and talking about our future work. Let's first introduce what is a sparse matrix. A sparse matrix is a matrix in which most of the elements are zero. For example, we have an A matrix here and these colored tiles are the non-zeros and these white tiles are the zero values. And these are the four basic sparse storage formats which is COO, CSR, DIA and L. In COO, we store each non-zero along with its row and column indices. CSR is a compressed version of CO, which compresses the row vector and store only the starting information of each row. So for example, this zero indicates that the zeroth row starts from the zero index. And this two indicates that the first row starts from the second index. And the four indicates that the second row starts from the fourth index. Then comes the dia format. Dia format is a very specialized format for the matrices which have very diagonally structure. Basically which has the, mat the diagonals which are fully packed. For example in this matrix so we have in the main diagonal we have 1, 3, 4 and this diagonal is also full. So we store the information like this here and then these minuses represent the, the padding and uh, so instead of storing the row and column values for each, val uh, each value in these diagonals, we store the offset for each diagonal and offset is calculated column minus row. So for any value, if we in minus column minus row, we get the offset. So say in the main diagonal for 2, 2, the row is 1, the column is 1, so the offset is 0. Similarly, we calculate offset for the diagonals. Then comes L. L is also a very specialized format for the matrices where the number of non-zeros in each row is almost equal. So here uh, we, we create a two-dimensional array out of the, the, no, uh, the non-zeros and basically we remove the zero values and pack all the non-zeros uh, uh, into a format like this. And then in this way, we lose the column information. So we, we have to store the column information in the same fashion, but we have the implicit inf row information available in this format. Next, we look at SPMV, which is sparse matrix vector multiplication, y is equal to ax, where a is a sparse matrix and x is input dense vector, and the output is vector y, which is also dense. So how do we calculate SPMV? For each row, we multiply the non-zero value with the corresponding x value and sum the values. So here, we multiply this one with this one plus 6 into this one is equal to 7. So similarly, we do this for each row. So in this paper, we are doing structure-based performance analysis of SPMV on both native and web environments. So the question comes, why sparse matrices on the web? Because web-enabled devices are everywhere these days. And then various compute in intensive applications which involve sparse matrices are coming to the web. For example, image editing, computer-aided design, text classification, and deep learning. On top of that, the recent addition of WebAssembly to the world of JavaScript. WebAssembly is newly introduced bytecode representation designed to complement and run alongside JavaScript to improve the performance of web application. But out of all the sparse operations, why SPMB is so important is because it's a computational kernel used in many scientific and machine learning applications, and it occurs frequently in these applications. Therefore, it has become a good candidate for the performance optimization. And the question comes, how to optimize SPM performance? One way is to select an optimal format to store the input sparse matrix. The second way is to apply data and low-level code optimizations to a single format. However, both of these techniques depend on the structure of the matrix and the machine characteristics. Our goal in this paper is to understand exactly that, and we achieve this through our three research questions. The first is to understand the effect of matrix structure on the choice of storage format. So given a matrix, we look at its matrix structure feature and see which, how it affects the choice of the storage format and how it makes one of them to be an optimal format. 
The second one talks about the effect of matrix structure on the SPI informants within a storage format. So supposedly we have say five matrices which belong to uh, one, one single format and when we look at their performance, their performance differs greatly. Then the question comes, what features are affecting its performance within a storage format? So we look at that information in this question. Next is to understand the effect of interaction between matrix structure and hardware features. So how together they impact SPMV performance. Let's look at our experimental design. So we developed a reference set of sequential C and hand-tuned WebAssembly implementations of SPMV for different formats on same algorithmic lines. So here is our SPMV CU implementation in C, which is a very simple one, multiplies the value with the corresponding X values and store them in Y. And for our benchmarks, we have around 2000 real life sparse matrices from the sweet sparse matrix collection. And these are the four sparse storage formats we use in this paper. And we measure SPMV performance for C and WebAssembly in floating point operations per second. For our target languages at runtime, our machine architecture is Intel Core i7. We compiled our C implementations with GCC at optimization level minus three. We used a Chrome 74 browser for WebAssembly as our execution engine with experimental Watson SIMD flag to enable the use of SIMD instructions. So when we run a matrix for SPMB, we look at the performance for all four formats. But then how do we choose optimal format? So we used X percent affinity in, in this paper. And it says that an input matrix A has X percent affinity for storage format F if the performance for F is at least X percent better than other formats and the performance difference is greater than the measurement error. So here, if a matrix has X percent affinity for more than one format, then we call it a combination format. And in this paper, we have used 10% affinity criteria. Let's look at our first research question, which is effect of matrix structure on the choice of storage format. So one example of matrix structure feature is dia ratio. So dia ratio is number of diagonal elements by number of non-zeros. So number of diagonal elements here means the number of elements in the diagonals if we store the matrix in the dia format. So for example, A matrix here, so if we store it in a dia format, it looks like this. And here, the number of diagonal elements is seven, and the number of non-zeros is also seven, so dia ratio is seven by seven, one. And if we look at this B matrix, so we have, uh, so we store it in the dia format like this. So, but when we store diagonals, so we have to store these zero elements as well. So then, therefore, we have seven, a number of diagonal elements, uh, but we have only three number of non-zeros, so the dia ratio comes to be 2.33. So basically, dia ratio indicates if the given matrix is a good fit for dia format or not. So we calculated dia ratio for all our benchmarks, and then we plotted for C and WebAssembly here, the dia ratio on x-axis and SPM performance on y-axis. And this blue star represents the dia matrices, the matrices which have 10% affinity towards dia format. And the uh, yellow inverted triangle represents the combination dia, the matrices which have 10% affinity towards dia, as well as some other format. And not dia are the matrices which do not have 10% affinity towards dia, but it has for other formats. What we found was the matrices with dia ratio less than 3 in both C and WASM show affinity towards dia format, except for a few matrices. And we found that these matrices, the size is very small. And uh, then we found that when the dia ratio is one, the performance differs greatly within dia matrices. So this is the type of questions we answer in our research question number two. So we see this behavior for both WebAssembly and C. And another point is that the, the performance in the WebAssembly is lower than the performance in C. This is because GCC is using memory addressing mode while V8 uses registers, which leads to more load in store and also high register pressure and leads to performance degradation. Similarly, we, we, we build the relationship between storage format and structure features for other formats. So for L, we calculated L ratio, which is number of L elements by number of non-zeros. And if it's almost equal to one, 
then L format is preferred. And also when this, there are small maximum number of non-zeros per row, L is an optimal format. And for CEO, if N and Z is less than N, which makes CSR format size greater than CEO, so the matrices tend to choose CEO over CSR. And when small average number of non-zeros are there, CSR has high loop overhead, which, which lowers its performance than CEO, CEO format. So CEO becomes the optimal format. And finally, uneven number of non-zeros per row leads to branch mispredictions in case of CSR. So CEO is a preferred format in that case. Next, we look at our second question, which is effect of matrix structure within a storage format. So SPM formats within CSR matrices. So one feature that we look at here is CSR working set, which is the memory footprint of matrix A plus um, the X vector and Y vector. So if, if you look at this graph, which is CSR working set against the SPM performance, and if we ignore the color bar for once, so what we see here is when the CSR working set is the same, the performance of the matrices differ. So, so the matrices which are here are performing better than the matrices which are here. So to answer that question, we introduced a new matrix structure feature called CSR locality index, which is an indicator of irregular memory accesses for vector X for a CSR matrix. So the irregular accesses for vector X affects performance. And this feature is based on the data locality model, and it uses reuse distance concept. So let's look at how to calculate CSR locality index. So this is the A matrix, sparse matrix, and this is its CSR representation. So to calculate CSR locality index, we first calculate row reuse distance for each non-zero. So the row reuse distance is the distance from the last non-zero whose column index corresponds to the same cache line of input vector x. And the unit of distance is rows. In this example, we assume that the cache line size to be true and cache size to be fixed. We slowly go through uh, it step by step. So if we assume that this is our x vector and the cache line size is 2, so x0, x1 belongs to one cache line and x2, x3 belongs to the second cache line. And we calculate the x vector access pattern through the column vector, so x0 because of zero column value. So then we calculate RRD. So has x0 been used before? No, it has not been used at all. So we cannot calculate RRD. And, but we stored the information that the first cache line has been used in the zeroth row. Then x2, which is from the second cache line, has it been used before? No, so we cannot calculate RRD, but we stored the information that the second cache line has been used in the first row. Then x1, has it been used before? Yes, it belongs to the first cache line and it has been used in the zeroth row, so the distance is 1. Then x3 is, belongs to the second cache line, it has been used before in the previous row, so the distance is 1. Then x2, similarly, we get 1. Then for x0, which is, has x0 been used before, which belongs to the first cache line? Yes, it has been used in the, in the first row and now it's being used in the, in the third row, so the distance is 2. Similarly, we calculate RRD for all the non-zero values. The next step is to calculate CSR reuse distance using frequency distribution over row reuse distance. So, so here we look at how many ones we saw and how many twos. So we calculate this frequency table and this frequency corresponds to CSR reuse distance, which is defined as the number of non-zeros of sparse matrix A stored in the CSR format, which access the input vector X with P row reuse distance. So finally, we calculate CSR locality index using cumulative percentage over CSR reuse distance. So CSR locality index is the sum, the sum we, we sum the CSR reuse distance from 0 to 15 and divide it by N and Z and calculate the percentage. This feature accounts for spatial locality for the non-zeros in a row and temporal locality for the non-zeros in the neighboring rows. And we chose the limit to be 15 based on our experiments. So finally, we found that the CSR locality index is able to tell us why the performance of these matrices is worse than these matrices. It tells us that the X vector axis pattern for these matrices is, is worse than these. Let's look at our third research question, which is effect of matrix structure along with hardware characteristics. 
So in this question, we evaluate the relationship between the sparse matrix structure and hardware feature, which together influence the SPM performance. The feature based on data locality model, that is the CSR locality index, has its roots in the hardware features like data cache misses. So to, to check the, the validity of our CSR locality index, we measured true performance counters using PAPI tool. So we calculated cache misses percentage index so which, uh, for which we considered cache misses from a specific cache for calculating the index based on the dimension of the sparse matrix. For example, if the double the size of vector x fits the L3 cache but it does not fit an L2 cache, then the number of cache misses from L2 cache is used. So here from the pattern in this graph, we found that the cache misses percentage index validates our CSR locality index credibility. Next is the branch prediction unit. So we compare CSR versus COO. So here we calculate branch misprediction index using branch PAPI branch misprediction divided by PAPI branch correctly prediction plus PAPI branch mispredictions. And what we do here is we store both CSR and CEO matrices in CSR format and we look at its branch mispredictions and performance and plot it against average number of non-zeros. What we found here is that the matrices, which are CO matrices here, they have very high branch misprediction index if we store them in CSR format. That's why CO is chosen for as an optimal format for these matrices. And the matrices which are here, which are CO formats, CO matrices, but they don't they don't have very high branch misprediction are here because of the average number of non-zeros per row because it leads to loop overhead in case of CSR. So next is the branch prediction unit CSR performance. So similarly, we calculate branch misprediction index and the, the performance degradation, which could not be explained via CSR locality or because of the X vector axis pattern is explained by ma branch mispredictions here. So the, the matrices which are performing worse than the other matrices which have same CSR working set we can see that the these dark colored ones have high branch mispredictions than the ones which are here. So finally, uh, we look at the summary and future work. So to summarize, the optimal choice of storage format is governed both by the structure of the matrix and code optimization opportunities available. Due to different code generation strategy, the SPM performance suffers in case of WebAssembly for Chrome V8 browser. Our data locality based structure features estimate if the SPM performance is affected by the irregular memory accesses for vector x. Finally, we validate our evaluations and parameter choices using hardware performance counters. For our future work, we want to further explore to quantify the impact of additional hardware features on SPM performance via matrix structure features. And want to explore new optimization opportunities for hand tuned WebAssembly implementations through the upcoming WebAssembly instructions and develop parallel versions of SPMV based on multi-threading features like web workers. And finally, develop automatic techniques to choose the best format for web-based SPMV. Thank you.